The Smash roster is one of my favourite parts of the entire Smash series, with the inclusions of new fighters every instalment. Never knowing who's going to make it into Smash 6, some fighters don't make it in, either being deconfirmed from me costumes, assist trophies, or other fighters from a, from a third party developer taking the spot, as well as a few other reasons. Welcome to a new Bowers appeal where we talk about ideas for fighters that could possibly happen in Smash 6, if not the future. I'm your host BB-8 from bb 8 House, as always, let's get into it, up next. That's right, Blastoise from the Pokemon series is who we are going to talk about today. I've talked about the opposite to pretty much every Pokemon on the roster, almost, but not quite. I've done Eevee, who's the opposite to Pikachu, Togepi, who's the opposite to Pichu, Del Fox for Greninja, Decidueye for Incineroar, but I've not done the opposite to Charizard. Then, if I was to do the opposite to Charizard, then who would I pick? And that's where Blastoise comes in. And yet again, I've not talked about the opposite to Lucario who is Garchomp, but if I have time to talk about Garchomp at some point, I'll do it. So, Blastoise is who we are going to talk about today. And I thought, I was triggered to do Blastoise, because if Smash 6 was to cut Pokemon Trainer and replace Squirtle with Blastoise, I thought, why not do it? Because I know we already have enough Gen 1 reps for a new foes appeared, but why not do Blastoise? So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the moveset, the neutral special, we have Hydro Pump. Blastoise takes aim with its water cannons and fires two powerful blasts of water forward. This attack can be charged to deal more damage and shoot a further distance. If used in the air, Blastoise fires the hydro pump and blasts upward at a diagonal angle. The side special we have Scald. Blastoise aims its cannons forward and fires a short range blast of scalding, not water, out of its cannons. This scalding water doesn't have much range to it. However, it deals a burning effect to opponents and has a good KO potential if the opponent has enough damage inflicted. It also will immediately thaw out opponents that are frozen and will deal extra damage to opponents who are frozen or dizzy when using Scald. For the up special, we have Rapid Spin. Blastoise retreats into its shell and spins rapidly whilst water waves fly all around it. This recovery is about as high as Charizard's recovery, however, where it lacks in distance for recovery, it makes up in strength. It is a stronger recovery attack and sends opponents left or right with its knockback. 
It also deals splash damage to opponents who are near Blastoise, who are hit by the water flying around it. For the down special, we have Water Pulse. Blastoise plants itself firmly and releases a quick moving ring of Water Blast forward. The Water Pulse Blast takes a second of startup before being fired but deals decent enough damage. It does not inflict knockback however, like most KO type attacks do, instead has a 40% chance higher than its regular in-game chance of causing confusion to opponents. And this will put them into a temporary dizzy state and the amount of time they are in the dizzy state is dependent on their health. Higher the damage, the longer they are in the dizzy state. If it is not lucky and causes the confusion status, it works like flood and will deal damage and simply push opponents backward as if they got hit with a blast of water effect. And finally, for the final smash, we have Mega Blastoise. Blastoise is engulfed in a large rainbow colored circle and transforms into Mega Blastoise. After turning into Mega Blastoise, it will take aim forward with all three of its water cannons and release a large blast of powerful water forward entirely across the stage. This blast will immediately destroy items, travel through walls, and deal massive damage to opponents caught in the blast. This final smash acts the same as triple finish from Brawl and deals more damage the longer opponents are caught in Water Blast. For the Alt and the Kirby Hat, we have Basic Blastoise. The default appearance of Blastoise representing its original design. Shiny Blastoise is Blastoise with a different colour scheme showcasing its shiny variant. The third alt we have Grass type, which takes inspiration from Venusaur, featuring a green color scheme and leafy ascents, similar to Torterra. The fire type, we have Blastoise adopting the characteristics of Charizard with a fiery appearance with flame inspired details. The Johto starter is where Blastoise pays homage to Feraligator. The water type starter from the Johto region, incorporating its design elements. The Sinnoh starter is where Blastoise draws inspiration from Empoleon. The water steel type starter from the Sinnoh region, incorporating its distinctive features. The seventh alt, we have the Alola starter. Blastoise takes cues from Primarina, the water fairy type starter from the Alola region, showcasing its elegant and aquatic traits. And eight, we have Dark Blastoise. Based on the clone Blastoise, as seen in the movie, Mewtwo strikes back, and it's not really normal that I do an alt based on a film and not a game, but I thought it existed in Mewtwo strikes back, so why not do it in Smash? And this costume would also represent Blastoise with a darker color scheme, and phasing its menacing side, with 
the features of Mewtwo Strikes Back and the darker colour scheme, I thought the final alt could be a good pull-up. And for the Kirby hat, Kirby can wear a hat resembling Blastoise's head, mimicking its iconic appearance. Along with the hat, Kirby gains the copy ability of Hydro Pump, allowing him to shoot powerful water jets like Blastoise's signature move. For the classic mode route, we have Tidal Power. In Blastoise's classic mode, Blastoise faces off against water-themed opponents or opponents based on aquatic animals and faces on stages that have some association with water. So for round one, we have Squirtle. Round two, we have Kinky Roar. Round three being Greninja. Round four being King DDD. Round five being Ridley. Round six being Inkling with eight of them. And for the final round, we have Mewtwo, and when smashed off the screen, Master Hand is summoned. For the victory theme, poses, and the punch out title, the victory theme, we have the Pokemon victory theme from Smash Bros. Victory pose number one, Blastoise fires one blast of water to the left and one to the right, and then roars at the screen. Victory Pose 2, Blastoise is seen curled in its shell, spinning rapidly as water blasts out around it. It then emerges its shell and aims at the screen. For Victory Pose 3, Blastoise beats its chest twice with one hand and then releases a large stream of water from its cannons, which causes it to rain on the victory stage. And for the defeat pose, Blastoise slowly claps for the winner while looking annoyed. And the punch out title, we have Kanto Water Beast. For the amiibo, the Blastoise amiibo is a well-crafted figurine that captures the essence of this majestic water type Pokemon. Standing tall at approximately 4 inches, ten, consisting of 10 centimeters, the amiibo showcases Blastoise in a dynamic pose, exuding power and confidence. The figurine features intricate details, with Blastoise's rugged brown shell displaying its iconic water cannons on its back. The glossy finish gives the shell a realistic shine and the vibrant colour palette accurately represents Blastoise's signature blue hue. Blastoise's fierce expression is perfectly captured with its piercing eyes and determined facial features. Its muscular body is depicted in a ready-to-battle stance, highlighting the strength and prowess of the formidable Pokemon. The base of the amiibo is designed to resemble a moderate water splash, further emphasizing Blastoise's aquatic nature. Similar to how Inklings have opaque ink coming out of the base, the water splash will be a translucent blue, and the Smash logo can be seen through the translucent blue, but the water ripple effect covers the logo, so you could barely see it through the water ripple effect on the amiibo. For the compatible games, the Super Smash Bros amiibo, you can tap Blastoise into the game to summon a fighter you can train. For Pokemon Unlimited, you can tap in Blastoise 
and tap again to catch the Pokemon which can be stored within the amiibo. For Decidueye Wrath of the Forest, you can tap in to summon a Squirtle Companion. Greninja the Shadows of Kalos, you can tap in to unlock new gear. Delphox the Houses of a Grexmoth, you can tap in to unlock Squirtle as a house student, but since one of the houses is themed after Blastoise, you could unlock something special to go with it as well. For Plusle and Minin Attack of the City, tap, you can tap in to unlock color palettes themed after Blastoise. Pichu's Adventure, you can tap in to unlock a Blastoise themed skateboard. Pokemon Origins, Latios and Latias, you can tap in to unlock decorations for Latios and Latias. Legend Celebi is where you can tap in to battle Blastoise and then tap it again to catch. And the amiibo would have the, the Pokemon stored within the figurine. And for Pokemon Visions, you can tap in to unlock some robotic parts to build Blastoise's Iron Tank form. For the stage, we have the SS Anne from the game Pokemon Red and Blue that came out in 1996, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green that released in 2004, and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee that released in 2018. Coming up with a stage for Blastoise was kind of hard this time because I tried to come up with a stage from Kanto that associates with water. Similar to how I've come up with the perfect stage for each Pokemon, like um, the Lavender Tower for Gengar. So I thought I had two stages on the brain for Blastoise. I'd either go with the water type gym from Kanto or the SS Anne. Since both stages involved water, but I didn't go with the water gym because there's a lot of Pokemon Stadium stages in the game. So I thought we don't need another one. So I thought, the SS Anne was my answer. And since this is probably the last time I'm bringing up Kanto in a new Foes Appeared, since I don't think I have any plans to do a new Foes Appeared video for Venusaur, the Grass-type starter, I thought, with Blastoise being... The last Kanto Pokemon I'm talking about in a new foes appeared. I thought the SS Anne would be a perfect stage to go with Blastoise. The SS Anne stage takes inspiration from the iconic luxury cruise ship featured in the Pokemon games. It is a dynamic and interactive stage that brings the lively atmosphere of the SS Anne to life. The stage is set on the ship's deck with the pictures background showcasing the vast ocean and clear blue skies. As the battle progresses, the SS Anne sets sail, moving across the water to various locations. The ship rocks and sways, adding an extra element of unpredictability to the fights. The stage transitions between different sections of the ship, such as the main deck, the cabins, and even the luxurious ballroom. Throughout the stage, trainers and Pokemon from the Pokemon series make appearances. Interacting with the fighters and sometimes interfering with the battle. Trainers could include the iconic characters 
like LT Surge or other passengers aboard the ship. Pokemon like Pikachu, Jigglypuff and Meowth could also appear, but if Pikachu and Jigglypuff are in battle, they won't appear in the background. And having aesthetics like this could also add an extra layer of chaos to the battles. Additionally, the stage features interactive elements that players can utilize to their advantage. For example, players can jump on lifeboards or use ropes to swing across the stage. There could also be platforms that move up and down, mimicking the ship's elevators. For the support fighters, I went with Jinx, Tauros, Lapras, and Kangaskhan. Since I'm not done support fighters for a Kanto Pokemon, I thought I'd just go for a bunch of Pokemon that don't appear as assist trophies in the Smash series already, and just use them as support fighters. So for Jinx, Jinx gracefully appears as a support fighter, showcasing its psychic ice type abilities. With a wave of its hand, Jinx can use psychic powers temporarily to stun and disorient nearby opponents, leaving them vulnerable for follow-up attacks. It can also unleash icy gusts that freeze opponents in place, providing an opportunity for strategic advantage. For Tauros, its wild and aggressive nature takes center stage, charging relentlessly at opponents, and Tauros uses its powerful physical attacks to knock them back with tremendous force. Its fierce tackles and headbutts can send opponents flying, creating chaos and disruption to the battlefield. For Lapras, Lapras brings its water ice type moveset to the battle, as Lapras gracefully swims across the stage, summoning waves and creating barriers of icy terrain, it hydro pumps, unleashing powerful streams of water, knocking opponents away, while its ice attacks freeze and slow down enemies, allowing players to control the battlefield with strategic precision. And for Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan showcases its incredible strength and maternal instincts. <laughs> With a mega evolution at its disposal, Kangaskhan temporarily boosts its stats, becoming even more formidable. It delivers powerful physical blows with its punches and kicks, while its Mega Evolution enhances its abilities, enabling it to unleash devastating attacks that can leave opponents reeling. For the music, I went with some tracks that involve water, which I do think that makes sense for Blastoise giving him being a water type Pokemon, so the the music list I went for is Surf from Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, Dive from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, Undella Town from Pokemon Black and White, Route 119 from Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Shalor City from Pokemon X and Y, The Seafloor Cannon from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Route 10 Pokemon Center from Pokemon Sword and Shield. Azalea Town from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Route 25 from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And finally, To the Sea from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. 
for the spirits, I went with Gyarados, who's a primary attack, with the ability to increase water-based attack power. With Gyarados having fearsome water-flying type Pokemon joining the battle with its powerful attacks and intimidating presence. And Gyarados inspires fighters to unleash a devastating water-based assaults on their opponents. For Lapras, being a support-type spirit with the ability to enhance swimming and water-based movement. With Lapras being a gentle water ice type Pokemon, lends its graceful abilities to the fighters. With this spirit, fighters gain enhanced mobility and agility in water-based environments, allowing them to swiftly navigate and attack their opponents. Vaporeon would be a primary defense type spirit. With the ability to increase water based defense. With Vaporeon being the water type evolution, which stands as a stallway defender. Equipping the spirit enhances the fighter's resistance against water-based attacks, providing a sturdy defense and granting them an advantage when facing opponents who rely on water powers. For Suicune, Suicune, the legendary water-type Pokemon, who's a support-type spirit, with the ability to increase movement speed on water-based stages. The legendary water-type Pokemon empowers fighters with its graceful presence. This spirit enhances a fighter's speed and maneuverability when battling on water-based stages, granting them swift an agile movement to outmaneuver their foes. And finally, for Prime Arena, who's a primary grab type spirit with the ability to enhance water based grabs and throws. Prime Arena, who's an elegant water type Pokemon, brings its captivating water based abilities to the battlefield and with this spirit fighters gain improved grab and throw techniques when using water based attacks allowing them to control and manipulate their opponents with fluid precision and finally for the reveal trailer the trailer begins with a sweeping view of the Kanto region, showcasing iconic locations such as Pewter City, Cerulean Cave, and the Indigo Plateau. The scene then transitions to a bustling stadium where a Smash Bros tournament is being held. The crowd cheers with anticipation as familiar Pokemon fighters, including Pikachu, Charizard, and Mewtwo, battle it out on stage. The narrator says, in the world of Smash, legends collide and champions rise. As an intense battle unfolds, the camera focuses on the wide-eyed face of Pikachu, showing its determination and spirit. And the narrator says, from the very beginning, these Pokemon have shaped the battlefield, electrifying opponents, soaring through the skies, and bending the very fabric of reality. The scene shifts to a fierce face-off between Charizard and Mewtwo, showcasing their powerful moves and unique fighting styles. The narrator says, 
But even among these extraordinary fighters, a new challenger emerges. The stadium then falls into silence as the camera zooms out, revealing the silhouette emerging from the shadows. The crowd erupts with excitement as the familiar shape of Blastoise takes form. Water cannons gleaming from its shell, and the narrator says, get ready to make a splash as the music builds up and Blastoise unleashes its powerful hydro pump attack, drenching the stage and sending opponents flying. The camera showcases Blastoise's moveset, combining water-based attacks with swift, powerful maneuvers. Before the gameplay is shown, the screen splashes, Blastoise rises from the tides. And the narrator says, Blastoise enters the fray, bringing its unwavering strength and tactical prowess to the battle. The trailer then shows Blastoise engaging in epic battles with various fighters from the Super Smash Bros. roster, demonstrating its versatility and dominance in combat. The narrator then says, with its impen impenetrable shell and devastating arsenal of watertight moves, Blastoise is a force to be reckoned with. The trailer then concludes with Pikachu, Charizard, Blastoise and Mewtwo all together ready to face another challenge that may await them. The four Pokemon charge towards the silhouette and the screen fades white, splashing Super Smash Bros. times Pokemon Red and Blue. So guys, what did you think of Blastoise? Unfortunately, in a few episodes time, we are coming across a new foe has appeared 90. Which unfortunately, makes Blastoise the last foe from the Pokemon series. Uh, which may seem like a sort of disappointing send-off to Pokemon within a new foe's appeared, but with only seven episodes left, I can confirm now not one of them is from the Pokemon franchise. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another New Foes Appeared episode in the future. And I will see you all in a future New Foes Appeared episode. BB-8 out.